Well, hi, folks. Good to see you. I want to start on time so we can get this four hours over with. Yeah. For those who don't know me, I'm John. Uh, I think everybody here pretty much knows me. And um, uh, my wife is Stacy. She's right over here. We have four children. Two are adults. Um, one is a 17-year-old. Those three are sons. And then we have a little girl who's nine. Her name is Ella. Our sons um, are Jonathan Jr. and Travis and Thomas. And uh, my wife and I have been the pastors here for about a year, right at a year. And we've had a great time. And so uh, I just wanted to welcome you all and say thanks to everybody who's helped with this. Um, if I started to mention names, you know what would happen. I'd miss somebody and feel bad about it. So I don't want to do that. There was a little boy. He was the youngest brother of a lot of people, of a lot of sons. And all of his brothers had gone off out to fight. And he was staying back because he had another job to do. And since he was young, he took care of sheep. And then he went out to see what was going on. He tried to find reasons. And so finally, he convinced his father to let him go out to the battlefield. And when he went out to the battlefield, he was able to, to snoop around a little bit, find out what's going on. And his brothers were saying, what are you doing here? You need to get out of here. And, and so he sees on this hill, or out on this field, there are two hills. One, one is a hill where, where his group and army are. And then the other hill is where the enemy's army is camped. And then there's this, this really big, giant guy, and his name is Goliath. Now, Goliath, by the way, I wanted to show you this. This, when we were in Israel, in fact, I was with Ray. Ray is here. He was with me there. And this is the place, apparently, um, if you can see this right here, that is actually a stream. Yeah, turn this lights out. And that's a stream right there. And this is a hill, and you can't see it, but over here is another hill. And this is apparently, this is the field where this, where this Goliath was going down to the field. And so this little boy, finally, he goes out and, and the word tells us, this, this story says that this giant had scale armor. Remember that. And so as they go out, he, he says, I, I can take this guy on. And, he, and, and this little boy goes out there, and you know the story, he, he defeats this giant. In the world of, of the Jewish people, they have this teaching that they use. And in this teaching that we even call the Bible, there are two kinds of teaching in the Bible. And in what we call the Old Testament, you have literal teachings and you have stories. So, when the people wanted to learn how they were supposed to live as a people, they would turn to what we affectionately call the Old Testament. They call the Tanakh. And the reason they call it this, if you can see this, is because the T is for Torah. The N stands for Nevi Im. And the K is Ketuvim. And what those stand for, these are the instructions, these are the prophets, and these are the writings. And so what they would do is the Torah could be a law and instruction. But it could also encompass the whole teaching. And so within that Torah, which were the five, first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, you would have the two different teachings of stories and what's called mitzvot, or a mitzvah.
Neither of these is more important than the other. The stories are important. What, what we might call the laws, but are better uh, translated as instructions, are the mitzvot. And because when I come to, to you, and let's say we're driving down the street, and you're, you're doing about 45 miles an hour, and then you see up ahead, it says 25 miles an hour, and so you see that sign. And you say, well, I guess I'm supposed to slow down and do 25 miles an hour. But lots of people don't slow down to do 25 miles an hour. And so what they'll do is they'll just kind of do maybe 35 miles an hour. And so when you want people to really take that seriously, instead of just telling them, you should drive 25 miles an hour, especially if you're trying to teach your kids how to drive, you tell them why. Now in Germany, there was this website, they, they posted this picture. And my wife and I lived in Germany for three years. And over there in Germany, the Autobahn, of course, you can drive as, as fast as you want in a safe, as long as it's safe, and I think it has to be under 155 miles an hour. And one time we were driving 128 miles an hour, and it was fun, because the whole time I'm driving 128 miles an hour, I can't tell who's screaming louder, the engine or my wife. <laughs> slow down, slow down. And, and so, uh, but, but over there, you can, as long as you're safe. Now, the, the article that they listed with this, with, with this blog was the advantages and disadvantages of driving in Germany. And they said, well, the advantages are that it's harder to get a driver's license, so the, so the testing is more difficult, and, and you have to go through more training to get your license. And secondly, the cars are safer. They have to have more uh, rigorous inspections. And I remember when we were over there, that was true. And it, you couldn't even have an oil leak, like a tiny oil. There could be no oil underneath your car on anything. And so they would have, you have more stringent inspections. And the disadvantage, though, is that when you're driving that fast, he says, this, this writer says, you find out why they used to make ships out of oak, battleships. The, the, the stories help us by bringing to life why we're supposed to drive 25 miles an hour. So the stories have a purpose, and the mitzvot has a purpose. Our laws have a purpose, and the stories that go along with them have a purpose, and neither one is less important for helping us to understand them. 